Hey, welcome back to D-Lab. This is part two of the Johnson Viking 2 CDC transmitter repair. In this video, I'm going to be testing the power supplies. And you're not going to believe what this thing dishes out to me. So in this video, we're going to test the power supplies of the Johnson Viking 2 CDC. This meter is monitoring the low voltage DC, as they call it, which is around 350 volts. This one is monitoring the negative voltage. I'm going to bring the transmitter up on a variac. I do not have the 5R4s installed, so high voltage is not being tested. We're just looking at the other power supplies. I'm using a variac. You want to watch this current. Because if there's any problems, you're going to see that current all of a sudden starting to raise. So far I have nothing on my meters, but I do see the 6 volt lamp on in the Viking. Okay, here comes my negative voltage. And there is my 350 volts, but look at my amp meter. Up, 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 up. We got a problem. So I'm going to pull out the 5V4 tube and we will repeat this test 5V4 is out bring it back up on the variac so now we won't have any low voltage DC but we should be able to get the negative voltage and look at the amp meter hanging right in there. So I've got negative 60 something volts. I'm at 100 input. So the negative buy supply is fine but we have a problem on the 350 volt DC line. So I'm going to leave that 5V4 rectifier pulled and now we're going to test the high voltage. I'm just going to look at the AC coming off of the plate transformer. So you're going to see that on this meter the other one is still monitoring the negative bias. So here we go. I'm not going to bring her up all the way. I just want to see if we have high voltage being produced by the transformer. And we do. Next step is to trace down the short on the low voltage supply so that I can actually power this thing up all the way. But this proves that the transformers are okay. And DC supplies are working, but we have some type of short that I need to trace down and correct before we can go any further. So here is the ohm reading off of that 350 volt supply. I've got a little over 18 ohms to ground. So yeah, that might as well be a short. If you look down here into the audio section, this big old resistor, that's supposed to be a 22K, not a 22 ohm. I disconnected the interstage transformer and unfortunately the primary is open and I found a smoked resistor. So somebody was poking around in here trying to find this short in the past I believe. Now it's my turn. Alright so check this out. This is pretty interesting. I was poking around in the transmitter while monitoring the ohms to ground on that cap which was around 18 ohms. Now, it's at 61 ohms. I was goofing around up here. There's a little disc cap. It's C17. And it goes to the oscillator tube. And if I move that thing around, my resistance is jumping all over the place. So I think we've got a flaky, I think it's a 005 cap tied off of the 300 volt line that goes to that tube and that is our short. I'm going to get that thing out of there and let's see if I can bring up the low voltage supply. I simply clipped one of the leads of that little disc cap and look at there. Open circuit. It's not quite open. I'm sure there's some resistance but it's not 18 ohms. So let's try that power supply again. 
All right, we're going to check that power supply, but I wanted to point out a few other interesting things. This is a 6AQ5 buffer amplifier tube. Check out the pin. And then that oscillator tube, the 6AU6, yeah, it wasn't even there. <laughs> All right, let's bring this thing up on the Variac. Monitoring DC volts, and this time I hope to see that low voltage supply come up and not see this amp meter increasing in the process. Alright, let's see here. I'm up to about 70 volts. Look at my amps. Alright, this is where it would do it before. Still in the middle of volts. And I still have amperage increase. So I still have some type of a short on that line. Maybe another 005 cap. So the plot thickens. This is really getting interesting. I'm glad I'm capturing this on video. So my short is back. Even after cutting that disc cap, it returned. I thought, what the heck is going on? So I got up there and I pushed around a little bit more on the oscillator tube area and I could make this reading go all over the place just like it did before. And I got the bright idea, maybe I should turn the oscillator tuning cap on the front panel and see what that does. So I'm turning it right now, look at there. Down to 8 ohms. You saw there it opened a little bit. There, open circuit back down so this tuning cap has got a problem I need to inspect it real closely and see if we have a bent fin or perhaps there's something else wrong with it but that is definitely what's causing the short diving a little bit deeper I'm measuring the ohms right off of that oscillator capacitor I've got the plates fully unmeshed. If I take my fingers and move this ceramic base, watch the meter. Open. And then I can make the resistance come back. I don't see any contamination in this cap. I don't see the plates contacting. There must be some leakage path that I can't see. All right, to prove this without a doubt, I remove the wiring that's going down to the oscillator tube. And now we're going to monitor right on the capacitor itself. Moving the shaft of the capacitor. There's my short, and it's gone. So there's no doubt this capacitor has some type of a mechanical failure. So let's just recheck the 350 volt DC line for the heck of it. All right, that cap is totally isolated now. The lead going down to the 6AU6 and off of the band select coil is disconnected. I'm watching my amp meter. So far, so good. But I'm waiting for the voltage to come up. If I got a short now, I'm really going to have to sit down and rethink this. I still have increased current. This thing still has a short. What in the heck? And there it is. 10 ohms. Right back to the same problem. I'm going to move that cap for the fun of it. Look at there. Somehow, it is still producing a short. And it's disconnected. What am I missing? 
All right, found the problem, guys. Moving that oscillator cap around was moving this metal upright. If you look down there at the band select coil, a couple of those wires are laying right up against the chassis and contacting the shafts of the band switch. So I just need to get those off of the chassis, make sure everything's isolated, and that will probably remove the short. All right, I connected the wires back up to that oscillator cap since that obviously was not the problem. Got those wires off of the chassis. And now we're going to try to bring up the 300 volt line again. Alright, here we go. Let's watch that amp meter. Hey, look at there. Now I'm actually seeing volts on that meter. We never got that far. It was always millivolts. And then the amperage would increase. So look at there. I'm well over 300 volts. That solved the problem. So that was a lot of fun running around, wasn't it? More than likely, the initial fault was created by somebody reaching in to change that 6AQ5 tube and their fingers hit those wires which contacted the chassis. But unfortunately, I didn't know that. I was tracing a short, trying to follow a logical path. It took a long time and then discover what a simple problem it was. Now you know why repair shops sometimes charge a lot of money for a simple problem. It's because you have to deal with this. So in part three, I'm going to move into the audio section and rebuild that. It's in real bad shape. And we got the open interstage transformer. I think I'm going to install a Hammond 124B. To gain access, I'm going to have to pull the front panel. There's a lot of cleaning and lubing that needs to take place. We're going to make this CDC work the way it should.